Uh, welcome, welcome to this first uh, session of our um, case studies. Uh, it's a series of co-production case studies hosted by Creative Europe Desk UK. My name is Alberto Valverde. I'm based in Edinburgh and I work at the Creative Europe Desk uh, in the UK. Desk is part of a network of promotion and advice offices across Europe. And it's our job to encourage participation to the European Union's Creative Europe Media Programme. Since 2014, Creative Europe channeled 1.46 billion euros to support Europe's culture and creative sectors. Looking at this domestically, since 2014, 90 million euros, uh, 2014 to 2018, so in those four years, uh, media uh, and, and, and culture Creative Europe channeled 90 million euros uh, to 376 UK based organizations. As some of you might know, Already, UK government has decided not to continue participation in Creative Europe beyond 2020. So the next program that will be approved in the first quarter of 2021, uh, UK won't take part on that one. That changes a little bit the relationship, but that doesn't mean that uh, collaboration between UK and Europe is over, not at all. Um, if you are a UK-based filmmaker uh, listening this session, you can still apply for any of the brilliant uh, media funded trainings available across Europe. They have proven career changing for so many UK professionals. I'm talking about ACE, EAVE, Torino Film Lab, sources, programs for writers, uh, directors, uh, producers. I'll probably drop an email in the, in the, in the chat after the introduction, uh, but it's worth taking a look at, at that because you can still be part of all of those. Um, all co-production uh, agreements, another aspect that won't be that much affected is co-production, all co-production agreements, including the bilateral co-production treaties and the European Convention for Cinematographic Co-production signed by the UK, won't be uh, affected by, by Brexit and co-production will continue between UK and Europe. Two weeks ago, we hosted the second edition of our co-production uh, club, our co-production weekend, uh, bringing together 18 selected uh, UK producers, emerging producers, uh, together with experienced European uh, international producers, film fans, experts. And a couple of things seem clear out of that. One is that Europe wants and needs uh, UK talent, writers, directors, cast, uh, crews, the other one is that UK producers want to tell stories, UK producers and writers want to tell stories for a global market and often co-production is a way to, to, to amplify those voices, to access a new funding, uh, to access more funding, to access more distribution options. And one thing was also clear, which is more information is needed. Uh, so until the very end of our existence, uh, uh, before the, the desk uh, stop existing at the end of 2020, we will continue uh, giving information. And may I say, inspiration to those UK producers uh, willing to work with European partners. That's why we're here today. That's why we are starting uh, with this series of co-production case studies to give you useful information, to demystify co-production between UK, UK producers and to offer a source of inspiration. The series will continue on the 5th and 2nd of November across the, across the autumn covering animation and documentary case studies too. But it's really great to start with this particular case with Fire Will Come. Um, for many reasons, I'll flag a couple. Uh, one uh, is a particular case going against a widespread mantra repeated over and over again to producers in the film industry, uh, very wisely so, but it's a mantra uh, that is never embark, never choose co-production route if this is your first feature experience. Producers Xavi Font and Andrea Vázquez from Spain's Mira Me Mira decided to do so and put together a co-production with uh, France, Luxembourg, Spain, and with the packing and the support of Yuri Mash. So no, no, not bad at all, no, for a first experience. Um, but also another point is that not every project has to be a co-production. Not every film you have in the, in the rooster, in the, in the pipeline has to be a co-production but sometimes it's the natural path for a story to, to, to become so and, and to work with European partners. Fire Will Come was the case of a, a film uh, made by a director called Oliver Laxe, which was fairly well known in Spain, but most importantly, that was a, a Cannes Film Festival song 
uh, all his previous films were in Cannes. There was a natural audience for his films in France and uh, in Europe and internationally. And, and so you will know more about the journey and the case of, of Fight Will Come in a, in a minute. Uh, from the outset, to me, it seems really interesting case because it brings together a, a group of producers that mix and blends uh, first-time producers, emerging producers, uh, veterans of the European film industry, uh, together uh, maximizing the potential of the film with regional, national, and transnational funds. As we mentioned, it had the support of Yuri Mash. It is a case, I think, also of being realistic to, with the budget, and that thing that we hear a lot, but very rarely happens, which is listen to your story and what the story needs and what the budget should be according to that. And as a result, you have one of the films that traveled the most in 2019. Uh, it premiered in Cannes, it followed in Carlo Vivari, Toronto, New York Film Festival, it won the Grand Jury Prize in Uncertain Regard, it won two Goyas, the equivalent of our BAFTAs, uh, and now we shortlisted as Spain to be Spain's entry to the Oscars. So no further ado, I'd, I'd like to introduce you to Xavi Font, main producer of the film with Andrea Vázquez from Spain's Mira Me Mira, uh, who will be guiding you through this exciting uh, financial, legal, creative journey behind uh, Fire Will Come, alongside with co-producers, Coldo Zuazua, experienced Spanish producers, be, be, produ producer <laughs> behind Kowalski Film, Films, uh, French producer Andrea Caral uh, from 4A4 Productions, and Donato Rotuno representing Luxembourg, or may I say Benelux uh, Tarantula film. Uh, again, as I said, a very good mix of uh, emerging and experienced producers working together in a project. Few housekeeping rules. This is a live captioned webinar. You can switch on closed captions in the, in the bar below. Uh, and thanks to Orla Pearson behind the scenes for helping us with uh, live captions. We recommend you to keep speaker, speaker's view because uh, we're gonna be mixing slides, presentation and discussion uh, and you don't wanna miss the detail on those. Uh, you can write your questions in the Q&A section, Q&A section, not chat, Q&A section, and, and we will be selecting those and asking to the panel after the presentation. And if last thing, if you haven't seen the film before the session today, we absolutely recommend you to go and, and watch it afterwards. The film is available in the BFI player and in Curzon Home Cinema. If you have a big screen at home, even better. If you have a good sound system, even better, uh, because it's a film that you really want to get immersed. It's a, it's a beautiful film set in the northwest of Spain, in the Galician forests. And no further ado, I'll hand over to, to Xavi, Font, main producer in the film, who will be taking you on a journey and you're in your living rooms, but we will go from Barcelona, if I'm not wrong, Xavi, Barcelona to Paris, Galicia. Yeah. Galicia, Galicia. Galicia I'm to Paris, to Luxembourg. Luxembourg. So the floor is yours, Xavi. Thank you. Thank you very much, Alberto, for inviting us. This is a, a great honor to be with you, uh, sharing our amazing experience with what we've been living with this. It, it was uh, truly amazing. And uh, hope we will condense all, all, all the things we lived in this short time and be useful for you. Uh, this is our main goal. Um, uh, as you said, Alberto, uh, Oliver is the, the central piece of this. Is the, he's a son of Khan, and this is a, a very important precedent because uh, he was awarded in, with his first film at the director's fortnight. And um, he achieved something really spectacular uh, with a film who uh, had a budget of 30,000 euros. Uh, this is uh, something uh, which um, is a major achievement, of course, for the for a, a first uh, long feature film for a director, that shows that Oliver has got something special, and uh, which is probably his approaching to the to the essence, to the essence uh, and it, with that uh, first film, probably to the essence of filmmaking, uh, uh, to the essence of, of filming. And uh, then he began to uh, raise uh, his second uh, feature film, which is called Mimosas. Uh, 
And here's our starting point. In 2015, uh, Oliver uh, was in transit, uh, uh, living in Morocco uh, at that time for seven years, I think, more or less, and with the intention of having more time in Galicia. And that what he was editing in, in Galicia, the, this second feature film. And uh, as it was so hard to raise uh, the, that second film, he wanted to go in advance of the third film, looking for producers uh, and not looking for producers uh, who knew very much, not, not, not very used to the business. So he ended up with a company with, without any experience. Uh, Andrea uh, Vasquez is a person who uh, is formed in sound uh, and in art history. And me, I'm mainly a composer. Uh, I'm a composer uh, with, a, with uh, an experience with 15, 20 years in the, in the business, but as a composer. So I, I know things about the, the, the film world. Um, and I have to say that also my background is that I've worked in a bank for 20 years until I could leave uh, full time from composing. Um, Oliver is a very clever person and I, I think he uh, find these two naive souls to, to uh, balance the production to the artistic part. Uh, and and uh, probably he felt more uh, safety in our hands, knowing that we uh, would bet for this, uh, uh, for this uh, uh, artistic part of the project and not um, to the financial. We know that maybe um, there are some Frankenstein portraits that we, uh, uh, that, that the industry used to um, uh, apply for the grants. And this is the opposite case. Uh, um, there are some, uh, the, depending on the restrictions from the grants, they are the projects. This is, is, is just the, the opposite. So Oliver wanted different producers, not just the business, uh, with an uh, approach uh, with uh, this specific project. And um, we have, at that moment, a sense of the film, very, uh, um, not very defined, because we had a script in progress with fires, uh, probably real. We didn't have the, the, uh, the exact idea. Uh, shoot in Ancares. Ancares is a region he, here in, in Galicia, which is far from everywhere. Uh, we had problems of the career, for example, because this is very far, it's in the mountains. And um, we had a filmic precedent, which is very interesting. And all those of you uh, who want to know more about Oliver, is it good uh, to see a, a short film? It's called Paris Number One. Well, it was um, a very important precedent because we take, took a lot of ideas uh, from that from that movie, and it's shoot on the on the hometown of, of the filmmaker. Uh, if you want later, I can try to seek the link and provide you if you want this to see. I think it's open in the net. The idea was to shoot a small film. Uh, Mimosas was hard to rise, as I as I mentioned. So we wanted something assumable. Uh, and in the meantime, Oliver in 216 uh, is attending for the second time at Cannes and awarded again. So we have a confirmed talent. This uh, uh, it was a, 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 the confirmation of, of Oliver uh, in the international community. And uh, Mimosas left has uh, a very, very big heritage. Uh, this is knowledge, is a team that, that we know it works, contacts, awards, open doors. Uh, so uh, with this um, assumable uh, 
budget we wanted to to do it uh, to begin maybe we had some open doors that we had to study but the first dimension of the film is a uh, economically speaking uh, with our first step and now i will share my screen uh, excuse me with our first line in the financing plan, uh, which is the uh, Agadic, which is the, the uh, in Galicia we have the, these funds, is the government funds here in Galicia, and the Galician TV. Uh, you will read this that 22% uh, because the, the, the uh, what we get from these two two institutions is the two, uh, 22 percent of the final budget, which is one million and two hundred thousand euros. Of course, at that moment, we didn't do the final uh, amount of the of the budget of the financial plan uh, because we had in uh, in our minds a uh, uh, first budget about three uh, three hundred and fifty thousand euros, more or less. That was the, the, the thing that we could handle uh, with responsibility. And, uh, and the second line, uh, oh, I, excuse me, just uh, to mention that uh, we are very lucky in Galicia because not all the regions uh, have one uh, committed TV station as the, as the Galician TV and a specific uh, founts to be produced in our vernacular language, which is the Galician, with the Galagian, I don't know how it's called in, in English, uh, the, the language from here. And uh, it's a very good first step because, uh, as you know, the intensity of the, of the grants, it has to be balanced between the private funds and the public funds. Uh, so this first line, it, it's beginning, uh, this seed capital, it's set in a balanced way. And so it's, it's a very, very good starting point. Of course, with all the endorsement uh, of, the, of the government and the, and, and the Galician TV to, the, to Oliver. Uh, that they, at that time, uh, they know him very well and he was longly awaiting Galicia because his first two feature films didn't were uh, shot in Morocco. So this is, it was the first Galician feature film for him. And then uh, also a second line uh, with the deputation, this is the province uh, uh, the administration, uh, the, the province government, uh, and the council, and also a neighbor uh, region, which is Asturias, where we had to um, shoot just one day, but we could uh, have some income from them. In the meantime, while we are applying for these first grants, we spent a lot of time in the locations and begin to feel that the ideal thing is to shoot in different seasons, specifically the winter and summer, as we as, as spectators uh, also appreciate when a movie has characters that are evolving and so are evolving the things, for example, in this case, uh, where we wanted to capture the essence of, of, of the land uh, to see it how evolves during the year, uh, presenting it uh, in uh, winter and then uh, seeing the blossom, seeing how it explodes the, the nature. Uh, and, and then finally, in the third act, is see how it, it burns. It was uh, important for us. But this, as a, as a producer, again, as we listen to experienced producers, they say, no, 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 don't split the, the shooting. <laughs> this is risky. You can miss some part of the crew. You can, uh, you have to, um, to have more, more money. This is more expensive. So it's not a good idea. 
but we far from that rule, another rule broken, uh, went to four period shooting. <laughs> Uh, two for one for the winter, one for the summer, and two for the uh, fires, the fire campaign, real fire campaign. So uh, seasons. We also find out that uh, we were absolutely committed with the analog print, with the cellular. Uh, Oliver repeated and repeated again that fire would need to be uh, filmed with fire. Um, uh, mentioning the, the, the chemical reaction and the light and the process of, of the analog print, uh, which is kind of poetic and represents and says a lot of, of, of Oliver as a filmmaker. Be committed to this, uh, to this celluloid, which is an heritage we receive from our from our business, from our history as the, the seventh art. And it's, a, it's good to feel you're committed. It, it, it doesn't depend on the, on the money. It depends really on the, on the, um, on the approaching you're doing as, as a cineast, as a, as a director, but also as a producer, of course. At that time, we had two locations outside Galicia, which, ha which was Morocco and Turkmenistan. Finally, they disappeared. But uh, all this, uh, with the with the seasons, with the, with the cellular, with the, with all uh, with that uh, international locations, is what mm, mm, makes us be open for the first time uh, to a co-production. We can uh, have this confirmed talent. With, uh, without opening uh, to, the, to the international co-production. And also at that moment, we began to study how we can produce in a, in a very rational way, the uh, safety, but also uh, matching and fitting the budget we have with the fires. And we began to work with the government because uh, the, the, the movies we studied that they had fake fires, we don't believe them, even when they have 10 or 100 million of budget, we don't believe them. So we want trust. Uh, that trust, uh, the truth, excuse me, um, we could um, achieve it by um, working side by side with the administration, with the government. So we contacted them and we had uh, and we finally find a way we could we, we had to be uh, firemen become firemen firemen to shoot fires with the brigades uh, along with uh, a, a extinction director uh, in the middle of real fires this is very uh, difficult of course but is the, I think it's the first time. I, I, I never heard about uh, uh, shooting fiction in real fires with uh, with an analog print. And imagine how it's how silly is that? Because uh, uh, in addition to a crew to extinct fires, a director of, of extinction has to be a film crew. Can you imagine that? <laughs> it's, it's very, very silly. But we find a way to be safe and uh, with no uh, problems with the insurance, no problems uh, with the, uh, uh, everything. We can go deeper on that, but uh, it would be so boring. If you have questions, of course, uh, I will be at your disposal. Okay, so we need grants for co-production in other countries, and especially those countries that permit to spend part of the grant out of the country. And we attend uh, to Rotterdam Cinemart, which is a co-production forum in January 2017. With the idea of knowing more about Erimash, with a new dimension of the film, then we, we are thinking about uh, over half a million. Sales agents, uh, with possible MGs, 
and with uh, focus to know uh, uh, those of those countries that we feel uh, possible co-producers. First, France, with Seamus Dumont, a very uh, consolidated industry close to Cannes. Uh, Belgium with a tax shelter, because also uh, Belgium has one of the few labs to develop and outprint, and also Portugal because it's so close. We feel it. We feel uh, Portugal as a natural co-producer. Um, we tried all that, but nothing uh, succeeded. <laughs> uh, it, uh, that cinema, we learned a lot of things, but we didn't find uh, uh, an ideal uh, co-producer until we met uh, an old friend of Oliver, who is uh, Andrea Kraut, and they were uh, perfect for us. Uh, personal uh, uh, relationship with Oliver, uh, a lot of experience with his company 44, and then French approach to this film because it, uh, Oliver also born in, in France, is a son of Khan, and uh, then mm, we could to mm, to set a very big step for the production, who will be explained by Andrea. Um, thank you, Xavi, for this nice introduction. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, so, as Xavi said, uh, my personal chronological story of Fire Will Come started uh, long ago, uh, maybe 10, 12 years ago, when I when I met Oliver in Barcelona. We were we were very close friends because we studied in the same university, but in different uh, years. But um, this uh, uh, friendship made me, uh, gave me a, an inner and close uh, uh, point of view of uh, Mimosa's uh, evolution and, and um, fabrication. Um, I, was, uh, I was there in the first draft script and I was there at, at the end in Cannes when they won the, the prize. And of course, I, I knew everyone in the crew, uh, Santiago Fillol, the, the filmmaker, uh, sorry, the filmmaker and, and screenwriter who has written all of Oliver's uh, uh, films, uh, Mauro Erce, who is the DOP, who was there also in, in, the, in Fire Will Come, uh, Cristobal Fernandez, uh, also a filmmaker and uh, an editor. Uh, so a, a whole bunch of uh, artistic, uh, amazing brains that uh, were that were surrounding Oliver, that were creating together, and that that were that um, were constit uh, constituting uh, a, a whole um, yeah a, a main brain, a main uh, force, and uh, so Mimosa's result was great. Um, at that time, I was. Uh, moving from, from Spain to France. And as I arrived here, um, I, this is a personal, um, like a parenthesis, I started working for, for A4 Productions, which is a 20 year old uh, French Paris based uh, production company. At that time, when I arrived uh, here, they were most uh, focused on French uh, feature films, like uh, art house films. And um, well, since I'm Spanish, since I, um, I was really looking forward to connect my, like my past with my present and my future, uh, personal and, and uh, professionally. Um, when Oliver and Santi were um, traveling from Rotterdam, because it, it was at that time that they stopped in Paris for a few days after Cinemark, uh, we just uh, decided that we wanted to work together in this film. Um, and uh, it was the beginning of our, our collaboration. So um, Oliver, when he was uh, presenting the, the project at that time, he was, uh, he was not very ambitious about the budget, which was very funny, which is very funny today. Uh, he said, oh yes, I, I really, I think it's uh, 300,000 
mm, European, and we were very surprised. But uh, then again, uh, the script was uh, at the at the very first stage, so we needed to let the project evolve, and of course, uh, let Oliver and and everyone um, see how the shape was uh, formed. So we met uh, we met Andrea and Xavi. Um, I have to say that Oliver is, apart from artistically, he is very, very talented at uh, choosing the people who is uh, working with him or who is around him. He has a, a very, very good sense of uh, combining forces, as I said before. So I have to say it, it was the first uh, great choice was, uh, was finding Xavi and Andrea who would uh, give all their energy and efforts and uh, love to this project I like uh, um, and in French we have an expression is abra uh, corps which is very uh, like deeply um, involved and um, and also I mean Oliver wanted us to be uh, with with uh, Andrea and Xavi um, artistically also and since Manny, my um, associate uh, had a solid experience in product in production um he he also wanted money to guide us in uh, in this uh, european uh, co-production that was about to be built um and also to to find the first the best uh production design together so we started traveling to galicia we met them we 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 were very close uh, discussing and um yeah and, and imagining the the scene the production together um, and then um, at some point we uh, of course uh, we started applying for grants I um, I have to say that we were very lucky because we got every everything we asked for uh, at the at the first uh, the first try so it's very exceptional and very uh, like a lottery in a way uh, it doesn't work that that way in, uh, in the real life but uh, this project had a like a star uh, that uh, was that brought us together and uh, so we applied for cinema du monde um, uh, in um, deuxième collège which is uh, the the most i mean the more difficult uh, part of cinema du monde because of course everyone wants to have a uh, like in, in the international co-production, France seems to be like the best um, uh, co-production uh, uh, partner uh, or traditionally since uh, the, the film industry here is so solid and, uh, and so historical. So everyone comes to ask uh, to, for money in France so, um, like uh, traditionally. Uh, it means that for Cinema du Monde, uh, second, second uh, college, um, big stars from uh, international uh, art house cinema uh, are uh, there. So uh, it was great to have it at the first uh, time. I have to say that uh, the president of Cinema du Monde is Charles Tesson. And uh, Charles Tesson is the, is the boss of La Semaine de la Critique where uh, Mimosas was awarded. So uh, of course, uh, for for me, it has of course some some he helped a lot also, and um, and the second fund we applied for, uh, even if we didn't know if we would need it or not uh, at the beginning, it's it's CNC VFX grant uh, that we also got. Uh, CNC VFX grant, I have to say, it's a it's an industry grant. It's not so creative. It's more. Uh, it's for supporting French industry, uh, French VFX industry. So it's not like Cinema du Monde where, where you can um, um, send some part of the budget or you can really be more inventive in, uh, um, in expenses. Um, um, yeah, in the expenses uh, um, creation. I, have to, I don't know how to say. Uh, um, so we got these two public grants. Of course, uh, we needed to, to, to have some private funds uh, to, to compensate. Um, 
And uh, that's when uh, we got Pyramid. Uh, uh, Pyramid as a distribution company in France was a consider considerable step forward uh, for Oliver's uh, French distributor distribution in here because uh, his previous features and um, only Mimosas had been distributed and, uh, and it was a smaller uh, company. So Pyramid, is, it was a very solid uh, and like, um, um, the, yeah, traditionally uh, uh, linked to Festival de Cannes. Uh, uh, I mean, to to to, to uh, art house cinema. Uh, uh, that of course uh, was super happy to have a project that had this uh, possibility of being uh, in Cannes Film Festival again. Uh, so uh, they invested uh, in national distribution. And also they, they invested in uh, sales because they became uh, Pyramid International became our sales agent. So that was uh, a considerable part of our budget, our private uh, part in France. And, uh, and at that point, maybe, uh, maybe Donato can, I mean, I don't know, Xavi, if you want, uh, you want to continue, maybe I, I just want to stop and I continue later because I think France appears later, like in a festival and everything uh, or in, in post-production. I don't know if you want to talk about how we split uh, expenses, but well, uh, I want to if, if you want, you can, order. I think it's, but, it's better uh, if you uh, finish and, and, and then uh, you, you, we can concentrate your part in, uh, right now, I think it's it's better to. to so to so we, I so I talk about how the way yeah. we we chose to, to to split expenses and how the French. Uh, um, I mean, which, which was our role in the in the shooting, right? Uh, for example. Yeah. Uh, so, um, as I said, um, Cinema du Monde uh, permitted us to be more creative, splitting expense expenses. And uh, as I said before, um, since I also had a strong relationship with uh, Oliver's uh, previous um, uh, bunch of uh, Alice, uh, we decided to, to hire Mauro Erce, uh, DOP. Uh, so uh, he was. Uh, he is also French. Uh, so he he represented our um, yeah par part of our expenses, and then uh, also Nadia Simi, who is uh, the the costume designer. And she's also French. So we had two main uh, um, chef de poste. I I don't know how to say that in uh, in English. Each of these heads of department, you you will yeah. use that term, heads of department. Yeah. Okay. Heads of department. But of course, our intention was to keep, uh, not to be intrusive as a co-producer, co but to be very respectful with, uh, with Oliver's choices, with the, with the team, uh, the creative team he needed, and, and to be there, um, uh, like to, to try to be the, more, the less uh, uh, intrusive uh, as a, as a co-producer country. I mean, not to, to put like a French speaker, uh, uh, the crew that would not be uh, connected to the others and everything. So, so we decided to keep the post-production part of the post-production in France, uh, like the color grading uh, that we did in here, and of course VFX. And uh, now I'm I'm sorry, but I, I just keep think that uh, I think Donato should uh, talk and then we can continue talking because I think I'm talking about post-production and it's the end and I don't feel the comfortable. I mean, since the film is still uh, in production, we haven't talked about Eumar. I'm sorry. Yes, yes. Now, just a few, uh, just a, 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 a little introduction because uh, after I joined the 44 in the project um, and and contribute his and their contribution is so valuable uh, with uh, with the uh, grants. We began to um, uh, make the test of, of the fire shooting, and uh, because we were uh, asking ourselves, how is it to shoot in fires? Does the cellulite uh, resist the the temperatures uh, of filming? How is it to wait for the real fires? Because we don't want obviously to provoke fires. Uh, is it realistic to, to, to do that? Um, 
will be good results cinematographically speaking. Uh, the results were amazing. This was in August uh, 2017. And uh, nowadays, the, the 80% of the fires in the film were uh, shot in those tests. Uh, this is, it, it was not a shooting, uh, an official shooting, of course, this was a test, but we needed to, to know exactly to produce this film, we needed to know this because it was a, a, a very big part of it. Uh, as well, also to uh, understand the, the business of the boot to be able to shoot this first scene, which is a destruction uh, by machines of a whole forest, which is another silly thing. Um, so uh, uh, mm, at that moment, uh, parallelly, we uh, apply now that we are with our partners in France and seeking a, a third uh, uh, country. First, we mm, apply very much with uh, Belgium. Uh, we, uh, uh, in the process, uh, we were not sure that Belgium could uh, could uh, um, succeed in the grants uh, applying, so they didn't want the, their uh, their grants. So uh, mm, uh, we knew about a new uh, uh, film, uh, a new program by Film Fund Luxembourg uh, uh, through our uh, French partners, and we reached uh, this uh, um, uh, I I don't know how to say it, determinant uh, partner who is Donato and his company Tarantula. Uh, who will explain us how it was the process. I think it was in November, November 2017, isn't it, Donato? Yes, well, actually, just to, to put everything back in the center, everything was very clearly explained here by Xavier, by Andrea. The, the, the center of the project is and remains the, the artistical will of uh, Oliver of uh, making this movie. Um, everything has to turn around the idea, the project, um, uh, the specificity of, of this movie. And so it, the most important thing is to find the right slot, the right space to get involved into this puzzle. Now it happened through Mani that called me um, at a certain point where there was this parallel move, uh, Belgium, Luxembourg, what is best, who's the best co-producer, who's, uh, well, best is not really the term, but who could be part of this uh, specific artistical puzzle. Now, um, my choice was uh, definitely linked to the past of uh, Oliver and Mimosa and of course the movies that he did before. And uh, I, I must say that without his, his artistical past, uh, it, I, I probably wouldn't wouldn't be here because that was the first re reason why I was uh, joining the, the co-production. The second step is uh, because you, there's the will on one side and there, there are the, there's the reality on the other side. Is it possible to be part of a puzzle of a, of a co-production puzzle in Europe with such a project? Now that was a real opportunity. Uh, I've been I've been handling Tarantula Luxembourg for 25 years and we were really very, very lucky at that time where Mani called me and where we met then uh, and, and had the first discussions with, with Xavi and, and, and the rest of the partners and Oliver, of course, is that we had a very brand new application um, platform that is called uh, Cine World. Uh, it was the first year actually where this platform was, um, was, um, applied, was, was uh, existing, defined. Uh, and it is very, very similar to uh, Cinema du Monde. Um, with some exceptions, um, um, it is not open to the first feature film, but to the second feature film. There's a limited uh, uh, amount of uh, budget, which was at that time 1.25, uh, uh, and now it's raised up, up, up uh, to 1.5 million euros. And it is open to uh, co-production from Lux with Luxembourg, with countries that are not the main production countries in Europe or in the world. So very, very similar um, political or strategical definition, artistical definition of uh, Cinema du Monde, but it was a test for us. It was, uh, it was the first time that we producers 
had the opportunity and we fought really really long years before we had this this, this opportunity to find some money um, the money is up to 200,000 euros uh, on, on, a, on a budget of uh, nowadays 1.5, but at that time less. And we got the 200,000 euros. And again, what are the reasons why we got the money? It is, of course, the artistical uh, strength of Oliver and the, all the preparation that was done before. Uh, Xavier told about the test shootings um, with the fire. Uh, we had some footage that we could um, offer to the, the committee in Luxembourg. <coughs> Sorry. And, and there was a kind of a very strange uh, situation because um, what well, the chance was that uh, Andrea, Mani and Oliver were in Luxembourg and was myself defending the project in front of the Comité, uh, Comité de Sélection, which is a very artistical committee. It is nothing, it has nothing to do with some uh, Excel schedulings and expenses also, but not the, the primary uh, information is what is the strength of the, the project. And we could defend the project, Oliver did that very well, with some footage, um, and it was a very, very simple script. There were, I think, less than 50 pages or something like that, which is, which is very complicated for, for a producer to come up to a film fund and say, well, actually, we are going <laughs> on a on a journey, would you would you please come with us? Uh, uh, and the elements are the ones that we have here. Uh, although it worked and it worked very well and with a lot of um, um, enthusiasm from, from our side uh, and uh, a lot of enthusiasm from the film fund. I must say, and to come back to the, the main questioning of, of, of my position in this, uh, in this project is, the question was, where is your place? How much can you, have as an input uh, with your experience, with your, with your point of views, um, because it is not really your project. It is a project that, was, that started years before. As Andrea said, it is a, a very family clan project uh, where every single person has a, a human, a particular uh, role to play. So jumping in as a co-producer uh, at a certain point, which is quite late, in, in the evolution of the project um, is, is a delicate situation. Uh, and it is not an easy situation, uh, humanly talking. It, uh, it, it, might, it might be complicated at some, some points, but at the end, the only question is, where can I do my job in order to support what I believed in in the beginning, what, what I trusted in, in in the beginning, which is the film. Uh, I think we, we managed, um, we managed quite well because we, Again, as Andreas said, we, we were not intrusive. We were, we were not trying to to um, to to um, um, I don't know bring in some crew members from Luxembourg uh, in the team. Or we tried to find the right slot on post production where, at the easiest way, the money that we raised up could be spent uh, for the movie and for the artistic will of uh, Oliver. Not always easy, a, a co-production puzzle has complications, but Luxembourg is a country of co-production and we have kind of a, an experience in, in, this, in this matter, I must say as well. So um, maybe just to close the discussion, the, the last step of your image is, is definitely also a very important thing. Um, and the presence of Luxembourg, I, I, I wouldn't say that it is uh, the, the, the main uh, element, but of course it is a very strong element to have three or four countries coming in with a very strong artistical pro, uh, project uh, to make it, of course, uh, more sexy for your image as well. But again, the most important thing is Oliver and the script and the project in itself. So that's where Luxembourg uh, was, is, and of course, very proud to be part of this um, very, very nice um, artistical journey. Thank you, Donato. Uh, okay, then in December 2017, we finally get the, the, the real green light for, for beginning the shooting, which it was uh, uh, giving uh, their support. Uh, I, I'm sure you all know the co-production program, which is initially uh, we applied in Belgium, but then later when uh, Donato uh, uh, and Tarantula get the, the, the fund from Luxembourg, then 
uh, we switched for Luxembourg, is highly competitive, condition of the 50% uh, confirmed financiation in every country, maximum of contribution around the 70%, 17%, excuse me, minimum two countries, but three is ideal uh, because uh, they, uh, are based in kind of a, of a Eurovision contest, <laughs> uh, voting for the projects and strategically is important to, to apply with three uh, countries. Uh, so uh, at that moment, we began to think in, in at the beginning of shooting, of the real shooting of the, of the winter period uh, in February, but had to um, set up the, the, the team and uh, as uh, uh, having the distance, the, the opportunity of, of uh, apply to the ICA and taking advantage of, uh, of a really strong person on, on, with, this, uh, with this adventure who was called Othuatua, we met him in a, in a lecture in, in December uh, 217. I, I'm sure he, he remembers it. Uh, and, um, we proposed him to be part of the project uh, as a line producer initially, but then we saw a lot of uh, similarities, a lot of, uh, of, of um, connection, and uh, we offered him to share the Spanish part in order to be uh, able to apply to the ICA grant, which is the government, the Spanish government grant. We, we couldn't by ourselves because we didn't have any precedent uh, uh, production uh, without points given by the, by the previous achievements of the company. Uh, it's not realistic to apply to that, to that grant. So uh, uh, we uh, shared uh, this Spanish co-production with Coldo and his company, which is Kowalski, and he will explain to you uh, the, his part of, of this adventure as well. Coldo? Hi, good morning to everyone. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you, Xavi, for introducing me. Um, as I, Xavi has told, uh, I meet them uh, in Santiago de Compostela on December 17th. Uh, I was uh, there just to talk about uh, independent movie shooting. Uh, I have my own company uh, in the Basque Country based in San Sebastian. And I used, um, I normally work in, uh, in big productions, principally like line producer, also like uh, co-producer supporting like uh, Basque film funds. And I also produced like uh, independent art, art house movies. And I was talking about this experience in Santiago de Compostela. And at the end of the conference, Xavi and Andrea came to me in the parking lot of the, of the building. And they told me about this project. <laughs> they were like really shy and they were saying, I will listen to your conference. And we were looking just uh, a profile of person like you, uh, we are just, uh, we have uh, Oliver Lax's last project. We have uh, Arima, we have Cinema du Monde, we have a co-production with France and Luxembourg. We have the, the regional funds from Galicia. We are ready to shoot, but we need some support, some kind of uh, person who can have experience to manage all this in the, in the, in the mountains of, of Lugo. It's a challenging project for us, but we need some support. And for me, it was so, I don't know, uh, so naive, the proposal. And I, all, all, I already knew uh, Oliver for his uh, awards in, in Cannes, and I, I saw his previous two films, and I like it. So uh, for me, it was something like a surprise because I didn't expect this kind of offer when I went to the Galicia. And I took my Christmas holiday to think about I read the script. I saw a little bit the whole project, the whole uh, dossier of the financing, they have also like a, a initial budget. And I started working on it. And uh, at the end of, uh, uh, of the Christmas dates, I, I tell them I, I will involve in, a, in the project. It was a challenge for me, but I think it was like something interesting. Uh, and uh, the people that I met at the moment, which were Xavi and Andrea, I like them so much. Uh, for me, were like really, close people from the early beginning and that has been at the, until the end. 
And uh, I, I think the 12th of January, I traveled to, to, to Galicia for the first time with, with the intention of, of just uh, line producing the film and trying to, to get uh, with the money they already had in finance it, how to manage all these challenging shooting. Because even if it was like a, a low budget movie uh, and an, 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 uh, an independent movie, uh, the, the, the challenge was really, really, really big because uh, we were going to shoot in the Galician mountains in winter, which is a really cold and uh, awful weather. Um, we were shooting with no professional actors, with a very small crew, with, uh, as Xavi has to say, with, uh, with celluloid. We were filming in film, no in digital. There are no laboratories in all Spain or even in, a, in a many other countries nearby. So we needed to send the film to Romania from Lugo. So when we were shooting a scene, we saw the result of that scene like eight days after. So it was like crazy for the days that we are, how, how we shoot normally now that we, you can see almost in the moment, the result uh, with the color gradient and everything like in five minutes, but we were shooting like uh, 80 years ago in the same way like the, the classical films were done. You know? Seeing the movie eight days after with the risk that it has because mo most we didn't know what's going to be in the in the film after eight days. And um, for me, was every, we were also splitting the shooting in different parts, as Xavi has said, the winter time, the winter season, the summer season. We have many fires to shoot in different moments because the fire was something that we need to shoot it by natural and we would need to be waiting for the fire to happen. So there was uh, like a standby units just to wait that the fire should happen. So that's also something that is quite special for our independent movie to have like a standby, standby units waiting just to have to shoot something. And there was the, the big scene of the eucalypts uh, falling. There was uh, also a really uh, technically and, uh, and production values, very challenging uh, a scene to shoot. So, so all this cocktail was something to, to manage and for me was really complicated, I think. Uh, I, I've been shooting many different kinds of movies, as I told, but this movie especially has been, uh, from, from my point of view, really challenging and, and complicated to, to fulfill. And I think that the result is really brilliant, so I think it's something to be proud for all the crew and I'm really happy. In the, in the time that I were, were, we were line producing and preparing the, the first part of the shooting of the winter season, I realized that there were some gaps in the financing regarding principally to the national, uh, Spanish national uh, funds. We have still some windows that we can approach to get more money. The first one was the, the bus public TV, the bus public regional TV where I'm, uh, I'm based the Basque country, and we have the, the, the we are lucky that the Basque region is a, a wealthy region, and we have like a different uh, funds and a public TV that offers the possibility of supporting the the, the local cinema, and we ask for a, a money for them, and they, they they got in, they get into the movie, so we got uh, some some part of the financing from the as public TV. And then we go for the national grants, the ICA, which is like the, the Film Institute of uh, Spain. And as Xavis has said before, they, with uh, the production company, they couldn't go for, for this grant because you, not, you need to have like a, some uh, movie made it before or some short film that has been awarded in some festival. And they didn't have any kind of, uh, this kind of, uh, films of short films and I, I had them I have the the points to to apply for this grant so we go we went together to to get the the grant and, and we got it too so that was also a, a financing to to fulfill the the gap of the of the movie and with that we were already safe enough to fulfill the world budget that we already had in mind and that they that the film would what needed so uh, I'm really proud of part of being part of this uh, amazing project. Uh, has been for me a really challenging work, and 
every step that we have fulfilled has been a success. We have now uh, this option of getting into the, the Oscars. I don't know if it's going to happen, but it will be like the, 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 the last point, of the, the last uh, part that we can get. Uh, thank you, Koldo. Uh, just to end this this part of, of, of the explanation of, of the production, uh, just mention that at the time of beginning to the shooting, we didn't have the ICA. We, we did get the BAST uh, TV, but not the ICA. So we were uh, shooting in winter and in summer. And then in September, October, uh, because of uh, uh, an August uh, constantly raining, we couldn't uh, shoot uh, the, the fires on the usual season of the fires. We had to uh, to, to um, put it uh, in in September. Uh, in September, there are no fires as well. Uh, we've been prepared during uh, 15 days, waiting for fires, and nothing happened uh, to complete. The, the script we done with uh, the previous test were that were so valuable, of course, and we, and we uh, said that those scripts and uh, um, kind of hunting the 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 shots uh, to to be completed that that, that script imagined uh, the imagined script, uh, so we completed uh, the, the the two regular shootings. But with this, with the fires, uh, we were um, with, with no fire activity. So we had to take advantage of having the crew together to retake something. Uh, uh, of course, we take, took advantage to uh, go editing, seeking what, uh, what's in the film to be completed properly, and then uh, uh, take advantage of this uh, moment and, and they have the crew together to uh, retake some some parts. But finally, the the, the day before the we, the, the shooting was uh, ending, appeared the fire, and uh, and, and uh, thank God uh, we could complete and and the, this this shooting and begin to post produce. Uh, at that moment, we had to renounce. At some uh, uh, at some parts of the film because of the budget, uh, we uh, we have a, a, a theme, a song by Leonard Cohen called Suzanne, and at that moment the, this song was out because we were spending and priorizing these retakes and these fires over uh, Suzanne. So we at that moment thought we could manage in another way, but as we succeed at the applying of the Spanish government. Grant Sika, then finally we were, were able to hire Suzanne, the rest of the music rights, close the, the post production process without um, concernings, and uh, be able also to spend in distribution what is required by the ICA and the amount. So here uh, is, it, ends, well, it begins in some way. The, the, the adventure uh, at Cannes with the support of the, of the French team and, and uh, with the support of, of all the festival and all the repercussion it had worldwide and, and that we are so, so thankful. Um, we are open to uh, hear your questions. Well, first of all, thanks to all of you for sharing that that journey. A very organic. It seemed as you as you were going through it, it seemed like a like a very easy, organic, <laughs> long process. But but I'd like to start with with a couple of questions I have here, and then we have another one. Uh, audience, if you want to uh, ask questions to the panelists, is the right time to put it in the Q and A section. But um, I was I was curious. Um, particularly, maybe this one is for. For everyone but Chavi, I'm going to marginalize Chavi for a minute. <laughs> no, um, one of the changes that we're going to have here in UK uh, and is that traditionally we've not been, uh, or UK partners don't tend to get involved in co-productions as a minority uh, co-producer, uh, tend to raise projects that 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 are growing or that are that they have their own in those projects, uh, if I'm making myself clear. And, and sometimes we don't see the value or, 
or, or we want to emphasize more in what will be the new replacement fund, maybe uh, the, uh, that aspect, the, the value of, of getting involved in, as a minority co-producer in co-production. So it's a question for Andrea, for Coldo, for Donato about what was the value of getting involved as a minority co-producer uh, in a project owned by someone else in this, in this way. Uh, I, 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 well, I, mean, I can oh, start. Um, I'm, I'm used to working in co-productions. So in all the films I'm, uh, I normally do, I think it's an option of sharing talent, of sharing, uh, even if, if you share property, you also share like uh, knowledge, uh, different kind of, of, of point of views of, of doing films, of, of creating. I think something that gives you more than if, takes you. So I think it's a very, very positive way of doing. Also, you, you share the risk, so it's uh, less risk in uh, anything you do. And in this case, uh, I was really interested in, in sharing this opportunity. They give you the opportunity of getting in a project which is already built, even if there are some gaps to do, with a really interesting director in a very challenging experience. So for me, everything was like... Uh, something that attractive so there were no gaps so for me it's uh, always as i say you every every project i've done in my life has been in a co-production form so i'm fan for fan really fan of co-productions great thanks thanks Koldo. in uh, in our case uh um i mean Maybe it's, uh, I mean, I, I've, neither me or Manny uh, uh, felt we were minority co-producers in the, like in the common language uh, co-production sense, because uh, first of all, Oliver didn't want us to be um, that, and we, we, we got it from the beginning. And second, because uh, we are uh, co-delegate co-producers, so even if we have our our part is smaller. Uh, um, like uh, legally, we we also we we were also sharing risks at this uh, stage. Um, and um, apart from that, like like more generally, of course, uh, uh, co-production has uh, lots of uh, positive parts and also lots of uh, uh, timeless efforts to 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 have a common language because of course uh, you have to put in common lots of. Uh, ways of working, ways of understanding uh, how to how to do this and that. And uh, of course, if, if you work only with uh, people from your country, you have less efforts to do in order to put this uh, vocabulary uh, um, production um, aspects in common. But still, um, I think every project has, and this very one, as you have seen or uh, heard in this uh, hour, um, I think it needed everything it, it, it got. And I think the film is the result of this organic mixture and this uh, organic production make, uh, make the film richer uh, than, I mean, make the film exist as it is uh, today. So, so yeah, I mean, I, I think everyone found the correct place and the, and the, the result is, uh, a good uh, mixture of ingredients, uh, in my opinion. Donato? Uh, well, I mean, Luxembourg is a small country. I mean, we are, we are used to co-productions. We need co-productions. I mean, it, it is the essence of what we do. Uh, it is very rare that we, of course, there are some projects that we start from our country and that where we are the leaders and, uh, and where the risk is the, 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 the main, and where we, we play the locomotives. But, we are so much used to co-production that uh, the co-production is, is a state of mind. Uh, where do you put yourself as a partner in a co-production? Are you a banker and you're able to find some money and put it there and then just uh, be responsible for what you have to deliver at your film fund? Or are you a producer? And that is a state of mind that I, I can only speak for me. Um, we are part of, we, 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 have, we are very lucky to be you know, invited in a project like this. We're very, very lucky to find the right, the right projects and end up in, in, in festivals and end up um, defending the movies uh, in front of an audience. And this is just a choice. This is just a choice of Tarantula in my case. And um, 
I have absolutely no frustration when I have 15 or 20 percent of a co-production or even 10 percent, which is the strict minimum we need, uh, if the movie is good. Um, and I have absolutely no frustration if there is less to say or less to share because the rest of the production is working very well without me. Everything is fine. But there's an invitation of being part of a co-production. There's an invitation of being part of a project. And the most part of the time, because it is organic, because with the experience you, you have, you're lucky to find the right people, then you have a natural place. And co-production shouldn't scare. Actually, you grow with co-production. Something maybe quite interesting on that, about how you, uh, four of you uh, are here, five in total, but is that mixture maybe of first time producers and, and more experienced producers? I don't know, what you were saying is really interesting, Donato, that element of you get in a co-production as a minority co-producer sometimes, and you learn from a producer that is, is delivering a project. Uh, you learn other cultures, but you learn other way to handle the budget. You learn other way to handle that production. How you felt is a question for all of you. Uh, maybe more for Xavi, interesting as a first producer, but all of you, uh, in that mixture of uh, emerging and experienced producers uh, delivering this film in, in that journey? Uh, we feel so uh, comfortable because we find the right persons, not just the right co-producers. I, I think it's a question of, of, um, of understand for what we're working, uh, understand that the, the main thing is around uh, an author, uh, and and build uh, the things uh, with the solid assets we have and, and in this case it, the, the Oliver is the person who uh, gives the, the logic. Uh, we didn't mention it, but Oliver is a person that uh, it likes to um, be on every single part of the process. So everything was uh, debated. This is, it's it's sometimes uh, very slow and and you can be desperate at, that at some point because every single thing needs to be discussed. But in the end, uh, as it happens with co-production, uh, being discussed, uh, you need to arc, you need to, uh, to, to, to find your arguments, confront it uh, with your partners, and then find the best way, uh, the, uh, respecting all the restrictions from the from the countries, from the funds, from the grants, and this is it takes a lot of generosity, a lot of understanding and empathy, and when th there are all those elements, I think uh, it doesn't care if it's your first uh, mm, uh, time producing, as it was the case of Andrea and me. It's just a question of understand and and empathize with the rest and find the right. Uh, and find the right path for the for the movie, not for oneself. That it doesn't make sense. It's a question of of the son. We all are fathers of a creature, of a of a child. Mm -hmm. And it, it certainly seems like a very organic pregnancy or a very organic <laughs> pro I process. Uh, in in hard, a way, which, which yeah, is yeah. hard to find. Obviously, there are creative and financial compromises that you will have to do that you will owe to your funds, to your companies. And it seems, again, like a process where you respect it a lot. Um, uh, you know, the artistic vision of the director and the team. Uh, but I don't want to leave for the very end, uh, you, you know, the bloody part or the tension or the problems. I don't know if you could mention as one, a couple of specific ones or, or pitfalls that you had. Uh, I don't know if Yuri Mash was one, but moments in the in the process that you have you had legal or financial problems that you had to what you were saying, Xavi, understand each other and come into compromise. I don't know if creative or financial compromises came, uh, and if you remember any specific ones in the process. I don't know because uh, usually the memory is a traitor because the memory will wrap some things magically from the from the uh, memory. Uh, because you, you focus on the on the problems uh, is is not a, a, a bad uh, is a is a bad idea. It's better focus on the solutions. But I can remember, for example, the the, um, the moment where we had to uh, switch uh, Belgium for uh, Luxembourg. This was a very tricky moment because the the uh, Erimash 
as they are that kind of contest, uh, voting their delegates for their countries, and then uh, they, it, it was a, 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 a moment with, with the broken, it could be broken, that, that part. Uh, and we understood that uh, we were an exception. This is, is not something possible, usually. Uh, but uh, because of the um, renounce or, and, and because of the grants applied by Belgium, it didn't uh, break through. Uh, finally, and uh, in case of, of Luxembourg, it succeeded. So we finally could manage it. But it was uh, hard. We had to uh, have a, a lot of um, uh, conversations with the delegates and so on. And uh, of course, as it happens with that reproduction, with the tensions and the, with, the, with the shooting and how to produce, for example, the, the part of the, of the trees, the, the, the destroyed uh, forest. Um, it was a, it was nearly to 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 disappear this this scene because it was hard it was very hard uh, we had to renounce for example we we, we have been uh, explaining how important it is for us the the another print but for this uh, opening scene we had to renounce we had to uh, renounce because we wanted to be shot in at night uh, in the, uh, a day. Uh, we could, uh, we had to choose. You want it on the day, you have an outprint. You want it at night, you haven't. And uh, illuminate by drones and uh, and have the right place to do that. A, 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 a forest nearly to be destroyed by other ones and uh, because they uh, take advantage of the wood and then sell it. Uh, we couldn't afford all that wood. <laughs> And we have to find the, the way to to produce it. But I don't know if my partners have uh, another. Uh, the good rent. thing is that you don't. The good thing is that you don't hear, so you don't have to go in the back. If you have to say something about the problems, you don't hear. You see your faces. No, I'm joking. But uh, just, just just to say, I mean, uh, you know, it is very great because it, it was it was a thankful journey for everybody, and and the, the result is the movie, and the result is the festivals, the prices, and that the. the the very, very strong happiness that we have with this project. But co-production is of course also, or production basically, is of course also linked to some frictions and moments that we have to face. And problematics have to be, as Xavi said, we have to look at the, at the solutions, but we cannot, we can never avoid the problems. And uh, co-production is problems to be solved. That's all. And this is a, all, here again, it is a state of mind. And here again, there's, it's, it's a way of approaching the, the, the partnership. I mean, going into a co-production uh, is thinking that in four or five years of partnerships, there will never be a problem, neither on the artistical side or on the financial side or on the emotional side is, is an illusion. But if you accept it, and if you accept to go th through these moments, then the result is what counts and that's it. And I think this is one very important message also to strong, to, to younger producers to be said, you know, it should not be, uh, um, it, it should not paralyze you. It is part of the process, and uh, hopefully uh, everything is good in the end, and, and, and that's, that's what counts. But uh, being scared of it, being scared of problems, so no, no way. I mean, that's part of the job. Yeah. Um, during the co-production club that we had last week, there was a lot of problems about, you know, UK, Europe, uh, cultural differences in the legal systems, in the cultural systems, but you all see producers that, yes, those problems can come but you are there, the producer is not just there to, 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 to do budget. It's there, as you were saying, for emotional support sometimes, for, 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 to reach commitments and, and to solve those problems. And we, we see that a lot every day in, in co-productions. Before, um, I think Orla, uh, our live captioner, will, will have to leave us soon, but we have 10 more minutes and I have three questions from the audience. So I'll try to put the three of, of you to the panel. Um, first one is from Shiwalong. Uh, I'd like to know more. I mean, we touched on this a little bit, but I'd like to know more uh, how you tend to decide whether a film project has the potential value to be a co-production. We, we talked about this uh, French love for, uh, for Oliver. 
Uh, I don't know if you, if any of you want to jump on this uh, or add anything to what we said. Um, just just to comment that the, that before uh, the, uh, thinking in France, which is of course a natural co-production in case of, of Oliver, uh, we felt that the movie was asking for more room in the budget. As I said uh, before, uh, we were um, uh, the, the the movie was um, asking for to be shot in seasons, to be shot in 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 uh, an analog print. An analog print uh, uh, is is more expensive. If we uh, at that time, I remember a conversation. Uh, okay, if we don't have very much, we don't have an analog print. Uh, so to um, uh, translate some lines in certain decisions that for us uh, it, it, uh, it would um, at the moment if an if very much uh, uh, wouldn't succeed, it was like losing uh, uh, an arm. <laughs> In, in our case, uh, so the um, the the, uh, con the, the um, co production find its own way by the necessity of the same film, and of course, then looking for resources, natural resources, in case of of friends and with the uh, important and determined pr uh, participation of, of our co delegate producers. Exactly. Obviously, sometimes the story. It's just set. It's written in your script to to end up in in April in Naples or, or in Canada. But sometimes it's more organic, as it seems your your case is. It almost seems like human connections led to the structure of of, of the co-production, which is very interesting. Um, another one, which I don't know if Coldo uh, maybe can tell us more, because I think his late, his last film is with Latin American territories. But someone here. Gustavo Portugal wants to know about the, it's a very general question, the possibilities of co-production with Latin American countries. I mean, I'm thinking on Ibermedia Fund, on Eave Puentes, I'm thinking on specific programs. Mm -hmm. I don't know if any of you want to give uh, a short answer to that big question. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, I uh, maybe I, Gordo, I, I, I just uh, say something because uh, maybe it's, uh, it has to do with the uh, fire will come is mm -hmm. that we are producing now um, Santiago Fillor, like the, the script uh, writer of Fire Will Come, is going to direct his first feature. And it's an Argentinian feature, um, Argentinian, Spanish, and French. And uh, it's called Matadero. And I, this is my main um, um, problem. Like uh, every night I go to sleep at that moment because uh, uh, the film is finan financed um, also by, by Yuri Marsh. Uh, we have C CNC, we have uh, ICA, which is the um, Ministry of Culture in Argentina. In Spain, also uh, ICA as well. So, Inca, ICA, and uh, CNC, Yuri Marsh. Uh, we are waiting for Ibermedia, but we have, I mean, I can say we could be shooting now, but the thing is that with this. Uh, um tracking situation we are stuck we cannot start uh, shooting in argentina not now and we don't know when because of course uh, the 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 um, overview is not very positive so um i guess uh, i mean even if uh, we understand as perfectly among co-producers as well uh, I, I think the 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 situation now is uh, is having the same um, the same consequence consequences worldwide, and and it's uh, as as difficult. Uh, I mean, it would be the same uh, shooting in uh, Spain or co-producing with Argentina. Uh, for me, it feels the same. I feel uh, I feel in travel in, at, in, in the same degree, and uh, we don't know when we will be uh, able to to start shooting. Uh, I'm very happy because uh, Yuri Marsh has. Uh, of course, they understand and they accept. They have accepted a, a six months uh, um, extra delay for for submitting papers and everything because, of course, they understand we are we are in a very difficult moment. But uh, but yes, I mean Argentina, as I as far as I know, uh, they they are still confined and uh, and the situation. I mean, of course, economically and everything uh, is catastrophic. Yeah, you know, thanks, thanks, Andrea. Uh, 
I may put it in the chat, but obviously we mentioned Ibermedia, which is uh, funding uh, to produce with Latin America, EAVE, uh, Puentes, which is uh, to is training for producers interested to, to co-produce uh, with Latin American countries, co-production funds like Hubert Balz from the Rotterdam Film Festival, Berlin Alley World Cinema, Ex du Monde, the French one. So you have a good bunch of world co-production funds out there uh, to check. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, if move? you want. Yeah, in, Kodlo, in, please. In my, in my experience, as you mentioned before, uh, we, in the last film we co-produced with Argentina and France, uh, our um, the approach into the Argentinian co-production was in the Ventana Sur, which is a kind of uh, Sur, yeah. it's a market in Buenos Aires uh, that happens normally in November. I don't know. I think this year will not happen probably, or I don't know in which which way will gonna happen because of the pandemic issue. But uh, in uh, our film was titled Aquelarre. It's a it's a movie that's a majority in Spanish production, but we co-produce with France because uh, the director, which is Pablo Agüero, is an Argentinian, uh, but it's based in Paris. He lives uh, in Paris. He has the uh, nationality, French Argentinian. So. This was the reason of the tripartita co-production because of the director. Even if the if the story and the, the film was gonna be shooted in the in the Spain, it was shooted in the Basque Country, part in Spain, part in the Basque Country in France. So there was like a, a, a splitted shooting between France and Spain because you know that we are in the border between the two countries. And then we have this director, and the the, the cooperation was quite natural to do in because of that. So uh, we brought many elements from Argentina for the shooting and we have made a post-production in Argentina. For me, the main issue co-production with Argentina, that everything has been really great, but uh, the strange thing that I didn't have the experience before were the, the issues with the, with the, with the currency uh, value of the Argentinian peso, which is a very changing currency and it gives you some kind of uh, insecurity moments and the, the budget um, changes. It's something that you are not used to work with, but at the end, uh, you, something that uh, you can manage, but there's something special, the, the currency and balance or the difference of currency in Argentina. Yeah, sorry, we are facing the same problem and which is oh, the good part of that is that, uh, of course, uh, as European, uh, Euros have more and more value in there. so. Of course, their their amount is um, is being. I mean, the value of their amount is being is getting lower, but our the value of Euro European grants is bigger. So at this at the end, I mean, it's it's complete. It's an issue. It's an issue to balance the the co-production percentages. Yeah, yes, that's yeah, yeah, question, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, um, maybe it's moving every day, uh, every second because uh, because of this uh, insecurity in uh, Argentinian. Uh, um, yeah. economic system mm. mm -hmm. which uh, kind of ties nicely to we have two questions but i think maybe they are both related to to what you were talking to the structure of the co-production budget to the co-production accounting uh, barbara orton from scotland is telling us is asking uh, how much if, if maybe you know you could put the bird's eye view we've been seeing you know how each country was bringing money but if there was a moment of Structure this puzzle. Uh, how much, if, if you had a moment of uh, uh, how much to apply for each financier at each stage uh, with that ever changing budget? You know, if there was a moment at a later stage with Luxembourg, with Urimash, and uh, that you had to restructure all of that, who was in charge of, of that production account? Well, I guess shared, but, but if you could tell us more about that. Um, yeah. Yeah, at the, in the moment of uh, when we closed uh, every March in January in 2018, then we had a, a, we, we set up the, the definitive uh, co-production agreement, and then that that was the moment where we set up the share, uh, depending on the requirements of every country, and of course with this contribution, uh, the. Um, uh, finally, uh, uh, it was like a, um, uh, uh, it was a little, a few part of the of the budget which is not uh, secured. 
which it was the ICA and the, and the Basque TV at that moment. But, uh, but everything fitted perfectly in the end. Uh, it's, it was kind of magic, but it, it, it was like that. Um, we, mm, we really uh, finally could, uh, could mm, get the, the funds we aspired to. And uh, if in case we didn't reach all those, we, it, it would be uh, replaced with, with, uh, with our own contribution funds. It, it, that was our plan. And uh, the, the difficulties were more in the, in the, in the accounting then, in, in the final accounts to, to, uh, to be able to, to justify and accomplish all the restrictions that were very, very, very tough. So that, uh, that's why I mentioned the generosity and the empathy, because not, not, are not um, uh, and are not words, so to speak. It's it's a reality which is exercised in, in this production. Mm -hmm. um, I could keep talking about this for hours. Probably, you know, we we try to touch on on several of the aspects. I liked a lot, and it's not the first time that I hear, you know, uh, comparing the the process of putting a co-production together to a process of pregnancy, to you know, caring about uh, the baby, about the stress, uh, and and waiting for the for, for the baby uh, in the and, outcome. So, and to uh, be a good parents with a good uh, example. And to be good parents. Yes, yes. I, it's not, a, it's not a, a bad comparison. I think it's a good. I, I never thought. In, in these terms, but, but it, it happened spontaneously, but I think it's a good comparison. And there are many kinds of pregnancies. There are complications in some pregnancies. But, um, I celebrate that, you know, uh, with a unconventional family, maybe with four, uh, five parents, uh, this pregnancy was so organic uh, and, and it seemed it worked so well for, for the three countries, for the four companies. And, and I'd like to thank you all uh, for sharing uh, your time, your knowledge uh, with us, and with the audience listening uh, to us. Particularly, I'd like to thank again Orla Pearson, which you know had to stay 10 more minutes and might be not too happy with me <laughs> for that. But, but yeah, thank you to everyone who attended. And I wish you, uh, to all of you, uh, to all the producers, uh, good luck with your future projects and with the, uh, uh, with the entry for, for the Oscars for Fire Will Come. Again, if you haven't seen the film, Go watch it, BFI Player, Carson Home Cinema. Our next co-production case study will take place on Thursday, 5th of November uh, on animation, animated project, uh, Wolf Walkers. Uh, until then, stay, stay safe. And again, thank you everyone for attending. Thank you panelists for sharing so much with us today. Thank you to you. Ciao. Bye.